God bless everybody. Today is Luke 15, Saturday, September 7th, 2024. Last we read Luke 14, and it talked about Jesus at a Pharisee's house. The parable of the great banquet and the cost of being a disciple. Luke 15 The parable of the lost sheep. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Jesus' words, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. The parable of the lost coin. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Parable of the Lost Son Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share to the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. 
When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has, because he has him back and safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had, but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Woo! That's a, I like that. The parable of the lost son, that, that's a real good deep reading. I, I like that one. Sometimes it's called the, um, uh, 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 the, what is it called? The, um, let me see. Sometimes it's, it's usually called the, uh, the prodigal son it's usually the prodigal son but this might be a different verse or something but it's the same same thing but the prodigal son that's a real good it has so many different different like lessons in it and different parts of it it's not just about one thing but uh yeah under my likes i highlighted chapter luke chapter 15 the whole reading and i highlighted the parable of the lost sheep sinners gathering around to hear Jesus this man welcomes sinners and eats with them there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The parable of the lost son squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine and he began to be in need. He longed to fill his stomach, but no one gave him anything. Came to his senses. How many servants have food to spare, and here I am, starving to death. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Father saw him and was filled with compassion. Celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Back safe and sound. Older brother became angry. All these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son... You are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So yeah, uh, I was in church one day and um, the pastor said uh, something that I like too. Because a lot of this is self-explanatory. You have to think for yourself and understand what it means. But uh, this, I, I would have overlooked uh, how, how, um, how he talks bad about himself and talks himself out of like, like he says, I'm going to go to my father. I'm not worthy to be your son. Um, treat me like a servant. I'm no longer 
I disobeyed you. I shouldn't. I don't deserve to be your son. And uh, he pointed out that. And then when he was going to say that to his father, his father ran up and gave him a hug and embraced him with compassion and forgave him and was happy that he came back. And I think we do the same thing with God. Like we talk ourselves out of it. Oh, I'm not worthy. I I, I sinned. I don't. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't deserve this. And we talk ourselves out of it. But God is love. So if we, we have to forgive ourselves and we have to understand that he has compassion, that he's a loving God. So God is good all the time, even when we don't understand. Amen.